everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Alex of Kyrie Star Astrology, and this is my video for the new moon in Aries coming in on March 21st, 2023, which is a Tuesday here in California. However, please do adjust for your current location on the planet as that time and date may change. I am so excited to do this video. Best alignments that I've seen in a while in a lot of ways. Lots of things completing. Uh, we've got so much to talk about. Really fast though, I want to make two quick announcements. Number one, I am going to be reteaching my Natal Chart 101 course live on Zoom later this week on March 23rd. That's Thursday. If you are interested in reserving a spot in that class, email me at coyotestarastrology at gmail.com. Would love to see you there. And second announcement, there are two, I believe, spots left um, in the Bali retreat that I'm facilitating astrology at in April. That retreat, I'm putting the little flyer up there on the screen, is April 17th through the 23rd. And if you're interested in that, please check out the link down in the description box of this video. All right. First of all, I want to wish everyone a... Happy Astrological New Year. This is, for us astrologers and us in the astrological community, this is the actual New Year. Um, the New Year starts with the arrival of Aries season. This is the arrival of springtime here in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the equinox. This is where we actually get the fresh start, new beginning energy that we typically associate with New Year's and the Gregorian New Year that is put smack dab in the darkest time of the year, the middle of winter here in the north. Uh, this last New Year's in January was smack dab in the middle of a bunch of horrific transits and retrogrades. So if you didn't feel like January was much of a new year for you, you're not alone. This, however, March 20th, March 21st, is the beginning. It is a fresh start and we have a lot of transits that have been stalking us, slowing us down, confusing us, actually coming to a close and we're shaking free of a lot of that energy and moving forward at last. So March 20th is the actual astrological new year. It's the arrival of the sun coming into Aries, and like I said, it is the equinox. And then the next day on Tuesday, the 21st, we have this new moon in Aries that we are about to discuss. So if you feel like celebrating the new year, you might want to plan something on the 20th or the 21st that represents for you this energy associated with stepping out and leaving old energies behind. There is a sense of celebration and relief for a lot of us coming with this new moon, but for some, a sense of grief. And we will understand in a moment why that is, no matter what side of the fence you end up falling on, celebration or grief, there is a sense of needing to move forward and being ready to move forward. Aries is, of course, the first sign of the zodiac. This starts the whole journey all over again, and Aries is cardinal fire. So this is that energy associated with um, stepping out. It's very assertive, courageous, and it's about new intentions. And the desires that we have that fuel intention. So being that it is the new year and a new moon, there's just this sense of birth and new, 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 and feeling really ready to step out into those energies. The ruler of this new moon is Mars because Mars rules Aries and here is Mars at 28 degrees Gemini. This is very significant, this placement of Mars, because Mars has officially, oh my God, I cannot even believe it, Mars has officially left post-shadow of its horrific journey through Gemini Square Neptune that we have been talking about for many months this followed us all through eclipse season, October, November, December, January, 
What a nightmare. If you want to know more about this transit, I covered it in depth in my last video. I'm not going to go through it again because, frankly, I'm ready to say goodbye to this energy. But just to cap it, this was very confusing for many people. Mars square Neptune makes direction very, very difficult to know. It makes what's true and What's not true, very difficult to know because of the illusory, deceptive, and fantastical nature of the planet Neptune. So that is not completely done. As you can see, Mars is at 28, Neptune's at 25. So technically the two are still in square when this new moon comes in. However, because Mars is the ruler of this new moon, this new moon and this new beginning is clearly somehow tied to the realization or the closing out of the lessons of this transit. So getting back to my point about celebration or grief or potentially a little bit of both, some people may have gotten really turned around during the last few months of Mars Square Neptune. Mars Square Neptune is where people can make really odd decisions. It's where they can think they're going to go one way and end up going the other way. It's where they can fall for a fantasy only to find out later that it wasn't real. So this last week that we've been coming out of and maybe even the week before, some people were having a, uh, a wake-up call, so to say, out there. I'm sure of it. And for those people, this time that we're in in this moment might be a little bit depressing or that, you know, there might be a sense of grief and loss as some people are freeing themselves from that confusing kind of nebulous, unclear energy. Uh, for others, and again, it can be a combination of the two, for others, there can be a path clearing out of the haze suddenly, where certain things that we have been waiting for, feeling delays around, feeling uncertain around, we're finally seeing in the next couple weeks things are going to start moving. And this is, of course, because Mars is leaving post-shadow. Not only that, but when Mars gets out of Gemini and enters Cancer, Mars and Cancer will start to form a beautiful supportive trine to Saturn in Pisces now. So that is going to help a lot of people. And I actually want to look at when that's going to be exactly so I can give that to you guys. Um, okay, so Mars enters Cancer Mar uh, March 25th. And so yeah, around March 25th, I'm telling you, you're going to see a lot of people that have been seeking something and unable to lock it in. You're going to see them finally gain some traction uh, around that time. Especially, I'm noticing a lot of people that have been looking for something involving a living situation, like um, signing on a house or looking for a rental, you know, cancer rules, living situations, home and family. A lot of people will start to see that move forward when, when Mars trines Saturn end of March. Okay, anyway, so back to the new moon in Aries. We can also see that Neptune is in conjunction to the new moon. This is pretty cool. This means that the energies of Neptune are sort of melding and combining with the energies of Aries. And Neptune is all about our dreams, right? While Aries is the initiative to get them off the ground. So to me, this new moon has like a clarifying, sobering quality to the weird, hazy energies that Neptune has been putting us through over the last few months. But it's almost like take what you can get out of the last few months as far as the visions and the things that you want to create in your life and then use this new seed planted in the very intentional forward moving energies of Aries to get that off the ground moving forward. Now we have even more of this progressive positive energy in the chart when we look here at the North Node. 
We've had so much stress put on these nodes over the last year with Saturn squaring that space. It's been very difficult and we've been talking a lot about the shadow work that's been involved with having hard aspects made to the south node in Scorpio, which by the way is not done and I will get to that in just a minute. However, during this new moon and the few days leading up to it, I'm getting this video out I think on the 18th, so we'll be in this energy when I get this video out as well. Venus at the North Node, such a beautiful moment in time. I really love this aspect. I love this aspect because as we know, the North Node in Taurus represents the new level. It represents the new growth level that all of us are striving for on a soul level because each one of us as a part of this collective has individually at this time signed up to be transmuting some very deep shadows back here in the South Node Scorpio Gateway and committing at a soul level to doing the evolutionary work that we need to do to get up to the North Node in Taurus. Now the North Node in Taurus in contrast to Scorpio is what I lovingly refer to as quote, the good life, right? So this is like good, healthy relationships. Taurus is ruled by Venus, so if there's love, it better be good love. Love can either make us feel sick or it can make us feel like we are walking through heaven. And North Node Taurus is about that kind of love, that heavenly love, that aligned love, stable love, healthy love, not toxic, not manipulative, not codependent, not unhealthy. So our relationships in the North Node and Taurus get much better. Our finances, the things that we value, the things that we put energy into in our life. Now with Venus aspecting the space, Venus is a benefic, the goddess of love and beauty and abundance is going to stroll past this space and she will be there for us during this new moon in Aries. So watch your surroundings during this time. There's two realities playing out here. There's the South Node Scorpio reality, and then there's the reality that you're trying, the direction you want to be going into, right? The Taurus direction. So if you're planning something to ritualistically or ceremoniously honor this new astrological year, we want to be creating a North Node Taurus reality. For me, I'm having a gathering here at my house. I've invited my closest, most heart-centered, inspiring friends to be here with me during that time. We're going to be sharing food and space and music, and we're going to be sharing our dreams and speaking them into this new portal. Because that, for me, that is my version of heaven. But for each person, that's going to look different. For someone else, that might look like being alone at their altar and having that sacred space carved out for themselves so that they can speak those intentions into the ether more privately or with their guides, whatever they're feeling. But I guess my point is this new moon has an opportunity to give us a glimpse into the artistry and the architecture of what we're trying to build into the future. And we want to be co-creative with that energy and do our part to help foster that. In other words, in how we use our time, what we plan to do during this very potent new portal. It's important because it's going to start a whole new cycle and we're essentially telling the universe, this is what I'm calling in. Whilst simultaneously, a lot of people are going to be releasing that Scorpio energy, especially if they got tangled up in it during the Mars square Neptune. Anything that's weird, anything that's not clear, anything that is you know, just not not supposed to go the distance. It's kind of like goodbye at this point, right? We've all we've all freaking been through it over the last few months. I mean, and that's why I love this chart because I'm gonna get to it now. We definitely have some intensity ahead, but I really it, it's for now, <laughs> we want to enjoy this energy um, because it's it's forward moving and it's some of the best aspects honestly that we've had in a very long time it kind of reminds me of the good old days back before things got totally insane when things were like semi normal does anybody freaking remember that out there like i hardly do but there was a time 
<laughs> so long ago when like things seemed almost sane. This this moment over the next uh, yeah, like couple of weeks has that feeling to me again. Um so freaking enjoy it, man, because yeah, we've got Pluto coming to square the notes. So take take a breather. Let's look at the tarot card real quick first associated with this new moon in Aries. It is the two of wands ruled by Mars. And look at, look at this girl here. So she's, it took me a minute to figure out. I was like, what the hell was this artist trying to articulate? with this two of wands here, but I totally get it. So she's facing away. She's obviously moving forward. She's all dressed up. She looks like she she's a vibe, right? She looks like she's feeling ready to go. She's going somewhere. And this ribbon that she has, it's sort of moving with the wind and it's almost like guiding her forward. And we can see she's taking a step, right? And in her hand, she has this interesting little like celestial crystal or something. It's very cool. So this represents the initial spark of will. And it's actually now that I get what the artist was doing, I'm in love with this card because that's what the first Deccan of Aries is about. It's not even necessarily about action yet. That comes later in Aries. This is the first Deccan. This new moon is the first well, it's at zero degrees, right? So we, it's not even about action yet. It's about the spark of will that then leads to action. So it's literally the initial spark of consciousness, the initial idea of something after coming out of the freaking womb portal of the dissolving energies of Pisces where we all just like become goo and we're just like, in the plasma of the void, right? So this is like the first spark of light, like lighting a match. We're coming back, right? And then we're going to start that fire and then the fire leads to action and la la la. So this is the initial spark. And this is a card associated with departures, moving forward, the hunger for adventure, it's about the, you know, the train leaving the station. Um, it's about stepping out of a cocoon, making decisions, and it reconnects us with the drive and desire to plan exciting new horizons. So it's just the beginning, guys. This is our New Year's moment, and this is the Two of Wands card. And you can see that, yeah, she has this, this spark, this idea and then she's gonna take a step forward and get moving. So that is our tarot card. Now let's talk about Pluto. <sighs> um, I think that, yeah, let's, let's just go into it. All right, so <laughs> a couple days after the new moon, let's look, new charts, March 23rd, okay. So on March 23rd, Pluto enters Aquarius. All right. So this is a big deal on its own, but Pluto's going to be in Aquarius till 2043, I believe. It's going to be there for a while. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. So yes, Pluto moving into Aquarius, massive deal, but we're going to be in that energy for a long time. There's lots that we can talk about later. The most pressing thing on my mind right now regarding Pluto moving into Aquarius is first, I mean, this is happening during America's Pluto return. So it's significant in that way as far as things that we'll see as a nation, which are, of course, connected to the rest of the world. So yeah, there's, there's big implications in that way. But the thing that I'm most concerned with is the alignment that that starts to make in the chart. And that is very clear right here. We've already been in this energy, but this is where it starts to really, really heat up. And Pluto's entrance into Aquarius is kind of like the official, okay, these guys are really coming into a hard square now. So you can see the square here. A square, once again, for review, is a stress aspect 
where we have energy from one planet, in this case Pluto, at a 90 degree angle to another planet or a celestial body. And in this case, we're looking at the nodes, which makes it very, very potent. So symbolically, Pluto is at a crossroads between the south node gate, the past life karma, the collective shadow when it's in Scorpio, and the north node gate in Taurus, which is what, again, the collective is trying to get to. Taurus, abundance, stability, self-reliance, etc. Pluto is in between them, putting stress on both of them. In evolutionary astrology, when a planet is squaring the nodes, it is considered what's called a skipped step or a necessary lesson that the soul needs before it can get to the north node. So watch my arrow here. The energy wants to come from the south node gate, all that karma, it wants to go through an evolutionary process, transmute, heal, understand, grow, mature, and come over here to the North Node. That's what the energy is pretty much doing all the time. Now our ego, of course, will pull us back to the South Node to continue sorting through our karma and repeating cycles over and over and over and over again. But on a soul level, we want to be going this direction. When something is square the nodes, the energy goes like this. It starts to go here and then it goes, ah, shit, I got to go over here. Got to kind of get wrapped up in this and then maybe it throws you back here again. Ah, and then like it's it's like it gets kind of like stuck. It's like a it's like a whirlpool. And then and then eventually after we get the lesson from Pluto over here, we come over here. Right? So Pluto is what? It's death rebirth. It's the phoenix. So that tells me that every single soul on this planet is going to go through a massive death rebirth phoenix moment this year. If this sounds familiar, it's because Saturn was squaring the nodes last year. But Pluto is different. Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. And Pluto is like cataclysmic transformation, change that literally changes you from the inside out. You are not the same person afterwards. Take it from me. I freaking a Scorpio stallion. When shit <laughs> changes in my life, it's literally like, oh my God, it's all things at the same time, right? And I'm I'm a different human on the other side of it. That's what this year is going to be like in some ways for us all. So that energy is starting now. And what this is going to do is, once again, it's going to bring up those Scorpio energies for each one of us in a different way. Important to look at where the nodes are transiting your chart now. They're in the early degrees of Scorpio and Taurus, so check where early degrees Scorpio Taurus are in your chart. That's where these energies are going to come up, and the north node is where you want to go. Where Pluto is transiting is where there's likely to be some kind of death rebirth happening. But the overarching energy is an old version is going to die for us all, and a new one is going to come up in its place. Now, the North Node is in Taurus. That's financial abundance. So what's the opposite of financial abundance? Scarcity, bankruptcy, economic collapse, right? The banks are starting to freaking collapse as like a couple days ago. We're already seeing this happen. This is going to get stronger because when we go forward month by month, oops, when we go forward month by month, they get a lot more tight together. Particularly around May, June, they get really tight, okay? So, Honestly, when it comes to like the economic thing and also microcosmically, this is going to be a tight time financially for a lot of us, for a lot of people. And what we really want to remember is, well, first of all, Jupiter is going to enter Taurus and hit the North Node. That's going to help a lot of people. But each one of us has to go through some kind of transformative process as well as meeting our shadow while this is all simultaneously occurring and on an energetic dimensional level, interdimensional level, this is all symbolic. 
So you need to get real sort of clear as this process unfolds, as we step into April, etc. what are the scorpionic energies that are keeping you back from the North Node? And what is Pluto trying to kill in your life, get rid of? What are you being asked to surrender? Like, and with Pluto, it's like you have to literally like pry your fingers off of it because Pluto is where we want control. We want to hang on. We don't want to die. The ego doesn't want to die. It's terrified of that, right? So it's not easy. It's not change that comes easy. We have to really be willing to do it and go into the shadow and release it. So if we do that, and I'm I'm freaking serious about this, man. Like, if we do that, when Jupiter comes here end of May and then crosses that north node end of May, right around here, May 30th, some of us can make potentially one of the most incredible quantum leaps in our life because Jupiter expands and it's going to be at the north node in Taurus and it's going to expand that opportunity for new evolutionary alignment financially, in love, in career, etc. But we got to let go and go through this this Pluto portal first, I guess is my point. Now, then things change. Pluto will still be square the nodes, but then guess what? The nodes switch. I didn't actually plan to go this far into it, but whatever, let's do it, man. Okay. So, July 23rd the nodes switch to Libra Aries, but Pluto is still square. So once again, the energy wants to go from here, south node Libra, to the north node in Aries, but it's got to go through Pluto first. This is where the energy is going to shift dramatically as collectively we all start to clear karma around relationships. I have these nodes. I know a lot about them. The south node in Libra is all about clearing karma around too much sacrifice in relationships. Because Aries is about our personal needs, our personal desires, our sovereignty, and our freedom. South node Libra is where we get derailed, distracted, or cut off from our personal trajectory and freedom due to relationships or karmic contracts with other people. When the nodes switch to Libra Aries, especially because of the square to Pluto, the way that we look at relationships is going to change dramatically. If you're in a partnership, this is going to be a time where a lot of people are going to need to roll their sleeves up and get to work because the framework of relationships, it's very clear here with Pluto square Libra, there's going to be a lot of people that suddenly have to do their mission because the North Node Aries is going to come calling them so strongly that if their relationship is in any way holding them back from the freedom to be themselves and follow their personal visions, it's going to get very uncomfortable. So relationships that can go through some kind of death rebirth process and hang on will make it out of that. But there's going to be a redistribution of energy. Ones that can't will likely transform and fall away. So that alignment essentially happens for the rest of the year. If we go here in September, um, you know, we've still got a light square to the nodes technically. And yeah, then we've got, we've got Chiron at the North Node too. So honestly, that, that energy pretty much lasts till the end of the year. It starts to lessen a little bit towards the end there, but we're, long story short, we're looking at Pluto square nodes energy essentially the entire year. So I'm calling it the Phoenix year because that's what Pluto is. So back to New Moon and Aries. 
I know I can hear some of you like groaning and exhausted out there, but honestly, I feel like we're well seasoned at this point. Like we have our sea legs. We're freaking warriors now, man. Like we have been through so much over the last few years. This is this honestly for some people this might be a cakewalk at this point compared to the Saturn square energies of 2022. But either way, it is what it is. Check where Pluto's going to switch signs in your chart. That's important to know as well. Know by house. That's going to bring in a new energy to that house wherever Pluto is entering Aquarius. Uh, and yeah, enjoy this new moon in Aries. If you got put through the ringer with that Mars square Neptune, use this new moon to catapult you forward in a new way that feels strong, right? And Congratulations to those of you that are, that's not the moon, I'm moon, sorry. Um, congratulations to those of you that are feeling and seeing a way cleared for you. It's like the plane can finally take off. The runway is getting cleared now. So happy new year to everyone. If you are interested in reaching out to book a reading, I am booking right now. I'm putting my website up there on the screen, coyotestarastrology.com. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram, follow me there. I am there at earth to coyote All right, everyone, have a beautiful new moon. Thank you so much, and bye for now.